What's up, YouTube? This is Boxing Wave. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. All right, let's do a quick breakdown for this weekend's fight. I will be covering a fight live, uh, and I will be trying to cover the Tiafimo Lopez card as well. I'm going to have both of them on, and I'm going to prioritize each fight that's actually going to be played because they're going to be on at the same time. You know how I normally do it. But this is the priority. This is the big super fight for this weekend between... Uh, Fran Juan Francisco Estrada, who's going to be defending his super flyweight WBC title against Jesse Ban Rodriguez, who actually held the title before but went back down to flyweight. And um, now he's moving back up to take this fight. And this is such a very, very an important fight. And I'll, really, I'll explain here. And it's kind of like, to me, the way I look at this fight. It's kind of like the passing of the torch fight. It could be that fight. Okay, because Juan Francisco Estrada, 34 years old, 10 years older than Jesse Ben Rodriguez. Um, Jesse's on the come up. You know, he's on a lot of people's pound for pound list already, you know, at the end of it. And this is his fight to really prove where he is um, as far as moving forward. One of the future stars in this sport. And you got the outgoing star in Juan Estrada, one of the four kings of the flyweight, super flyweight division, um, future Hall of Fame fighter, you know, multiple, multiple division champion, and has a hell of a resume, 44 wins with 28 knockouts, just three losses, never been stopped in his career, no draws against a young, hungry Jesse Rodriguez, who's 19 wins with 12 knockouts, no losses, no draws. Okay, um, and multi-divisional champion himself already. All right, so this is, uh, you can look at it as a passing of the torch. But with Juan Estrada, the reason why the Estrada fight is so important right now is because Jesse has already beaten two of the uh, four kings at the super flyweight division. He's already moved up and beat Carlos Quadras for a vacant title. And he's also stopped Sorung Masai in that division right after that fight he beat him too and those are two of the four kings now he's fighting three of the four kings and i doubt he's ever he'll ever fight uh roman gonzalez um i mean they were just literally sparring and preparing for this fight here you know they have the closest relationship um but um it's a, such an important fight and it could be the passing of the torch if he is able to win against uh estrada el gallo in this fight here so it's a really really big fight and, you know i have to say and i say this a lot um you got to give the credit to estrada uh quadras uh sore rung the side and most important importantly uh chocolate chocolate tito because they're they're part of the reason why this generation here is watching the the smaller divisions you know i mean i've been doing content here now for over 10 years and I can tell you, um, Roman Gonzalez was definitely the reason why I started really making content on the smaller division. Seeing him on the on the cards of Triple G and stuff, fighting here in New York, I had a pleasure of seeing him live and actually meeting him too. Um, it's really dope that these guys got everybody paying attention to the smaller divisions, even the fighters like Yoka who. You know, having been involved in the Four Kings, but he's basically a legend over in Japan himself. And also getting eyes on, you know, you got to give a credit to Inoue and, and all of the other up-and-coming guys like Jesse and Bam Rodriguez that's on the come up. But you got to give these guys credit because they definitely made the smaller divisions fun. Um, you know, and even though we've had legends from the smaller divisions like Manny Pacquiao, like... Um, um, Marquez and all of them, you know, and, and, and a lot of those guys were legends then, even in the smaller divisions, but a lot of them got popular after they had moved up their way, and that's when they became even more popular. All right, so um, let's talk about this fight. Um, you know, a lot of the fights I had to rewatch. I did do some film study, and I had to go back and rewatch a lot of these fights. I think the main thing between these two is obviously um, outside of the inactivity of Francisco uh, Estrada here. He's been inactive. Okay, not only is he older here, but he's been inactive. He hasn't fought since December 2022 when he fought Chocolate Tito for a third time, right? I thought the second and third fights were very, very close. 
Um, I didn't really like the scoring. I think it was maybe in the second fight, maybe not sure with the third. But um, it's been a while since he's been in the ring. You know, 2022, uh, it's been about a year and a half, maybe 18, 18 months or so since his last fight. So that's really not good for the older guy making a return and being inactive and, and having injuries and stuff like that. It's just not really good, and fight, especially when a guy like Bam Rodriguez, Bam, Bam is coming off some of his most impressive. I mean, he's had a streak of tough fights leading up to this fight to prepare him for this fight. He's fought a couple of unorthodox fighters and uh, Christian Gonzalez um, and also uh, uh, Sonny Edwards in his last two fights. You know, he fought Israel Gonzalez, who was a high volume puncher and he fought two of the four kings in Carlos Quadras and Sorung Visay. so he had a streak of really really good fights to lead up to this fight and all of those guys a lot of their styles all of their styles is for the most part are completely different you know so for as far as preparation that's a big deal the fact that he was inactive and let me just pull this up you know I mean in 2020, he fought Quadras. 2021, he fought Gonzalez, Roman Gonzalez. I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm looking at the damn, the wrong uh, box rack here. Uh, but uh, in 2022, I'm sorry, he fought Carlos Quadras. Carlos Quadras. So just two years ago, this streak that I'm telling you, this, this five-fight streak was just two years ago. You know, so he fought three times. And I remember back at the end of that year, and a lot of people felt that he was fighter of the year for being so in, active in fighting two of the four kings. Even though, yes, they're older. No, they're not in the prime. But the fact that he was in, inexperienced and moved up to 115 to fight those two guys and then fought Israel Gonzalez and the tail end of that year um, was a great year for him. you know. And then fighting both uh, Christian Gonzalez and Sonny Edwards, Sonny Edwards most believed to be um, his toughest challenge. And I think it was his toughest challenge going into the fight simply because Sonny Edwards was undefeated. He is completely unorthodox. He can switch. Um, he's fast. He's a good, he's a very, very good slick boxer. And um, I think it was his toughest challenge going into the fight because of the fact that it's so much he brought to the table, you know, except lack of power i think the lack of power is what really didn't work out for him and the reason why i picked uh bam to beat him in that fight but it was a 50 50 fight going into that fight and now he's fighting estrada who's been uh 18 months out of the game all right but even with that being said i would still rate estrada as being the toughest challenge by far because i think out of all of these guys that bam has faced I think that Estrada is probably the most complete fighter out of all of them, you know? Um, I think he's overall the best boxer. I think he has the best resume. I think he has the most experience. This guy has, you know, well over 40 fights, about 45 professional fights. Um, and a resume, again, this guy fought Carlos Quadras twice and beat him both times. He's been in there with Chocolate Tito three times. Regardless of how you feel, he has two wins official wins of Roman Gonzalez and he's been in there with Sor Rung Vasai um twice all right lost the first one but was able to win the rematch so out of those four guys those four kings he has the most credible wins out of those four because all four of those guys fought each other but all, all of all four of them he has the superior um resume as far as just those four fighting each other you know, he has the most wins because, you know, Chocolatito was stopped by Sor Romansai, uh, you know, lost in, the, uh, lost in the first fight, but got stopped in the rematch, you know, and um, Carlos Quadras got losses against both uh, Chocolatito and, um, you know, and, and of uh, uh, Estrada. So, you know, I don't have to break it all now. You know, I don't want to keep breaking the rent down to four kings, but it's very important for Estrada to uh, mention those four fighters, you know, um, those three other fighters there, you know, and Jesse has beaten two, but he's beaten them both, you know, way after their primes. Um, but Jesse's a southpaw, and I think that's a really important key factor here 
um, because I don't believe that um, Estrada has fought a southpaw since he foresaw Rungvisai, and that was uh, back in 2018. Um, a close fight, but he lost to him in that fight, and that was the last time he's fought a southpaw. You know, I don't think he's fought a complete southpaw since that loss. And um, even though he beat him in a rematch, you got to remember that Sol Run Visay did not fight as a southpaw for the majority of that fight, which was very annoying. I have the break. I have definitely um, spoke about that in, in previous breakdowns that I did. Because I just didn't understand why change which, with, uh, which was working for you in the first fight. Why, why would you come out and completely change your style if that was the style that worked out for you? But Estrada is going to be fighting a southpaw and Jesse Rodriguez, a fresher one. Um, one that is, you know, just a totally different, better chess player than Sor Run Vasai. So let's talk about the fight. I think like what I said about Estrada, going back to him, having the experience... And just overall, such a good boxer, you know, well-rounded and a guy that is, he's been on and off people's t t pound for pound list for years. You know, not everyone has had him there, but if you had him there, you understood why. And it's partly because of who he fought in those four kings um, and his win percentage of fighting those guys. And he's complete, good boxer. He's a boxer puncher, um, but he has dog in him. He can exchange. He can trade. He has good combinations, and he can move well. Solid defender, not a great, great defender, but he can take a punch. So what he brings here is stronger than all of these other guys that Bam has fought because Bam's opponents, other opponents, they, they had clear weaknesses that were very obvious, you know, going to fight, not just age. And not just in an activity, but just they, as far as styles and what um, Estrada brings, he has way more strengths than all of these other guys. Again, good boxer, but he can punch. He's very, very durable. He's never been stopped before. He's been buzzed in fights. He's been hurt in fights, yes. But he's never been stopped, and he's always had a good chin, and he's been willing to trade and and, 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 and and go to wars with guys that can punch. You know, high volume guys like Chocolate Tito. Big one punch knockout power like Sorung Vasai. So he's been in there with all kind of fighters. And he's able to do things that some of the other opponents may be able to do too, but maybe not too well. And he's able to um, adjust in fights. And I think this fight is going to be one of those fights that both fighters, to me, have shown that, that they're capable of adjusting. So I think whatever Estrada is doing well in the fight, I think Jesse will probably have to make adjustments in the fight. And I think it's the same with Jesse. Whatever he's doing in the fight, Estrada can, can, can commit to other things. I've seen him commit to going to the body. You know, I've seen Estrada use his legs, fight off the back foot, use the ring in, in that lateral movement, you know, and set traps and counter. I've seen him turn into a dog, front foot heavy, being the aggressor, all right, loading up and, you know, picking his punches and stuff. So I've seen him fight different fights depending on the opponent. And I think this is going to be one of these fights where I do think that at times it's going to be a chess match, but I also think in periods of the fight, it's going to be, uh, 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 these guys are going to be traded. You know, these guys are going to go to war because they're both aggressive fighters that can fight smart and be very technical. But I think they're going to be going to war at some times. They're not going to have some choice because both fighters at some point is going to establish lead foot dominance. And they're going to want, you know, I don't think whoever's fighting on his back, their back foot, they're not going to want to be there for too long. And Estrada, in my opinion, I don't know how he's going to start the fight. I don't know if he's going to start fighting on his back foot and look in the counter. I don't know if he's going to fight that fight. Or I don't know if he's going to come in a little bit more aggressively early and try to get Jesse to fight on his back foot. I don't know if he's going to do that because I've seen, we've seen the Chocolate Tito trilogy, right? we all seen the fight. And I've seen points where Estrada would start out each round very aggressive coming forward and making Chocolate Tito back up because Chocolate Tito is a guy that... He's a pressure fighter, and he's not a fighter that you want to let him get into a rhythm. 
You know, once he gets into a rhythm, he starts using them angles and he starts doing high volume punches and stuff like that. That's when you're kind of in trouble. You want to take him out the rhythm. And I think here with Estrada, being that he has the experience, he doesn't want that to happen with Jesse either because Jesse can fight that kind of fight. You know, so I think with Estrada, I think with him, what I think he should do in this fight here is definitely box and change up at certain points. Be the aggressive. You know, you don't want Jesse to just be coming forward the entire time. It's not going to work out. So be the aggressive. Yes, you're the older guy. You've been inactive. Commit to the body a little. We know that Jesse has shown to be pretty durable at this point. He's shown to be pretty durable and, you know, he's young, he's fresher and he's going to be using angles. You haven't been in there with too many southpaws recently. You know, you lost to the last one you fought. So what you want to do is try to, you don't want to get bullied. You know, you don't want to start out like that. So I think in the beginning, he should kind of start out with coming forward, you know, or keeping the fight in the center of the ring because, you don't want to get outworked and bullied and pressured by the younger, fresh, uh, fresher Bam Rodriguez in this fight. So I think in the, in the beginning of this fight, yes, box, but show him that like, this is your division. You're naturally the bigger guy. You've been there for a longer time. Um, you hit different too. This is not Sonny Edwards. This is not Israel Gonzalez or Christian Gonzalez or any of those. You can box, but you can punch. Let him feel your power. Don't let him be so comfortable with getting into your space. So I think that, in, in, in my opinion, he should start the fight um, and be prepared for a high volume. You know, um, Jesse likes to fight out of an active high guard. Um, he, uh, he likes to try to step around you and stuff, use those angles as well. So he's going to be tricky. Um, I think the most, the biggest weakness with Estrada, is sometimes he doesn't really move his head that much. You know, he, he, he drops his lead hand a little bit too much and, and leaves there open. And, you know, when I was watching the sword run with the side fight, and that's the only fight that, I, the first one, that's the only fight that I fought, I mean, rewatched in its entirety um, the other day. Uh, I noticed that, you know, Sor run with side didn't have a problem with landing the straight left hand continuously, you know, and he has a big, big punch and, and coming behind it with a swivel jab as well with the right hand. And sometimes, you know, Estrada with his lead hand will just be down and he will catch the jab following the left hand. And um, that could be a problem and be an issue with uh, Jesse Rodriguez going into this fight. So, you know, I think um, for, for the most part, um, Estrada has to continuously try to move, you know, away to his left. You know, away from that 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 lead left hand. Um, use the ring at times. You know, don't just come forward. Don't go straight back, but move laterally, which we've seen him do. You know, and um, use those combinations against Jesse. Definitely go to the body um, a little bit more. You know, take the air out of him. Again, Bam has been pretty durable up to this point. So go to the body a little bit more. You know, we saw Israel Gonzalez in that fight. Um, go to the body. I hope I'm getting the right Gonzalez, right? Because I keep saying Israel. Israel is the one that went to the body and was high volume against Bam. Yeah, so it was Israel Gonzalez because it's two of them. It's Christian and Israel. Christian was the mover. He was the unorthodox fighter that was switching and using a ring. A lot of you know, a lot of people didn't really care for that fight because Jesse had to continuous continuously try to trap him and cut off the ring. Um, but yeah, I think you know. There's definitely going to be openness to the body, especially because Bam is usually fighting out of high guard and stuff. Bam is still a pressure fighter, but he is a technical pressure fighter who doesn't like to waste too many punches. Um, and he is more about the accuracy. And you see, you would see that in the Israel Gonzalez fight, even though Gonzalez was throwing so many more punches or it seemed like he was. It seems like Bam was being more consistent and, and, and more effective with the punches he threw. All right, so I think that should be the plan for Estrada. When it comes to Jesse, Jesse, again, you know, and I know I already stated a few things going into this fight here. Um, Haven't fought a complete fighter like Estrada, but what Jesse brings to the table here is the, you know, him being a southpaw, him being a very 
um, good chess player, counter puncher, good combination, good angles, you know, and knowing how to step outside of, you know, of, uh, of danger and, and stepping around his opponents and using those angles and those blind spots to attack and, 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 and also cut off the ang- uh, cut off his, cut off the opponents that know how to use the ring. He's getting better and better at that. I know a lot of people didn't like the Christian Gonzalez fight that I just mentioned. But what I've seen, when I look back at it earlier today, um, I see that he did a good job at cutting off Christian at times. And it also helped prepare for the Sonny Edwards fight because he had similarities there with Sonny. Sonny was kind of forced into fighting Bam's fight. You know, uh, we didn't see nearly the amount of movement that we've seen with Sonny in the past. Sonny was forced to kind of having to stand in front of him, you know, because the amount of movement, you know, Bam is so good at keeping you right in front of him. And he's gotten better with each fight. He's still getting better. He's scary because when a loser this fight, excuse me, it's scary how much he's improving at 24 years old. And the quality of wins that he's getting here. All right. Um, but again, Bam is so well rounded. Um, he has good power. Um, he's like I said, he's a good technical fighter um, with the legs and, and with the counter punching. And um, he can be so slippery at times. Um, he's he's such a he's such a good fighter. I, I, I don't want to just keep gassing him up, but. Everything that he does, it seems he does everything well. And even though he doesn't look great in every fight, it really depends on who he's facing. Um, and he's willing to adjust to any of these guys. Again, this is his toughest match, in my opinion, because he's fighting another good boxer that can punch. And I would love to see how he deals with uh, the counter punching, the combinations, and the power of Estrada and the experience overall. But I think Jesse, it's all about timing. Sometimes it's just all about timing. And him coming in and fighting him at this time with these kind of fights that he had previously is perfect for him, you know, to lead up to this point to take this match. Um, And I think Jesse overall, I think what Jesse needs to really do um, is not get reckless early. I think he needs to come in. In this earlier round, I know I said Estrada needs to come in and 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 kind of force uh, some lead foot dominance early. All right. Um, I think Jesse should be a little bit more observant in the earlier rounds, maybe the first or second round. Not like too many rounds, but like the first or second. I'm not saying give the rounds away, but study Estrada a little bit more, you know, so you can get the angles right. You can feel the power. Um, and you can get adjusted to the speed, the jab, and everything from Estrada. Um, I think this is what Jesse should do early on. Take it easy the first round and two. Figure everything out and see what you can do from there. You know, just be the computer here. Whereas the older Estrada needs to be more dominant earlier, in my opinion. And then um, figure things out midway through the fight. You know, um... So I think uh, as far as my prediction, I have to go with Bam. Uh, I think Estrada, I wouldn't say this is a 50-50. I think it's pretty close. I'm thinking like 55-45 because I think Estrada is prepared for whatever. But I just think going into the fight, the actual matchup and style to self and then also the age, the inactivity, I have to go with Bam as a winner because... Again, he's been active. He's been fighting guys to prepare him for this kind of fight. Um, being dominant against Sora Rungasai, stopping him. Even though I know Sora is not at his prime and far from it at this point in his career. I still think that win said a lot. Stopping him the way that he did said a lot. Um, being more dominant against Sonny Edwards than most people expected. Uh, and just the, inact- just the activity... 
Um, him being a southpaw, you know, and Estrada not really looking so good and losing to the last southpaw, real southpaw that he he fought. I just have to go with Bam. I think he just has too many advantages going into the fight to pick against him right now. You know, and even though Estrada does have the experience and I think he's the best as far as the fighter that Jesse has fought, you know, and that's including Sonny Edwards. I think he has a lot more to the table. Him being older and active, again, I just can't pick him to win against Bam right now. You know, I just think Bam, it's his time. Um, you know, I think this is going to be a passing of the torch fight. I think it's gonna. I think he's going to win and, and show the world that he's a top guy. Um, he left 112 being the top guy, you know, not undisputed, being, being clearly the top champ at 112. And now he's going to go to 115 and, and show the world. That he's a top champ at 115 right now. You know, um, I think he's going to beat Estrada. I think it's going to be a very good fight. Um, I think both of these guys are going to be the best that they could be at this point. You know, there's no reason for Estrada to not be at his best at this stage of his career for this kind of fight. It's a very important fight. I know he's had fights in between, you know, certain fights. I know the Cortez fight, he didn't look that good. I remember watching that fight. He didn't look that good in, in, in against Cortez, but look. He'll be prepared for this fight. You know, he said some things about Bam in the past. Um, and I think he's going to want to prove it. You know, and I think I don't think he's ready to give up the throne here. And I think Bam is ready to take it. He's more than motivated. He should be motivated more than ever here. And I just think, you know, whether it's a chess match, whether it's a brawl, I just give the slight advantage of Bam being the southpaw being the move the way he could and those angles um you know i just think he's gonna be able to get it done you know i just think he's gonna the defense um everything is just gonna be a little better than estrada he's gonna win a decision i think it's gonna go to a decision you know i mean i think estrada might get dropped he might even get hurt with a good shot but i think bam is I don't I doubt that Bam actually stops. If Bam is able to stop him, that would be a huge statement. And that's an instant pound from pound listing performance. Wherever wherever you're gonna put him. Um again, some people might have him there already. I personally don't, but I think he's right outside of that. And um instant pound from pound status for me. Alright, so again, I will be here Saturday. Uh, I will be here and I will have both fight cards up, Tiafimo as well. Um, but this is the priority fight of the weekend. And this is probably the only breakdown I will do for this weekend's fights. All right, such a big fight here. All right, so let me know what you guys think in the comments. I got Jesse Bam Rodriguez winning by a decision. And I also think it's going to be a unanimous decision. All right, good fight, very competitive, but I think it's going to be clear. That Jesse did enough to win this fight. I don't know. Maybe we'll see something. Maybe Estrada hurts him with a good shot. Maybe we see uh, Bam in trouble at some point. I don't know. We'll see. It'll be. It should be a good fight, though. All right. Let me know what you guys think. Again, please share the video. Smash the thumbs up if you like the uh, the video, and uh, and subscribe if you haven't. I'm out. Peace.